I had an interesting thing happen to me last year that really affected me. It, it, in fact, I'm still living in the middle of it. And it came to me, it was a word from the Lord that came to me in an unusual way, somewhat. But I had just woke up and I had put my feet on the ground. I'd taken about two steps. And literally, I heard a voice that came as it was, it was interesting, but it was like it just came literally to, into my left ear. And it was that clear, and it was just like a, a spoken voice that was heard in the spirit realm. But I, this, is, this is all it said. But he, the voice said this with an urgency behind it. And the, the word was this, what I've told you to do, do it now. Well, I literally stopped where I was standing, and it shook me. And to be really honest with you, the first thing I thought was, God, am I about to die or something? I mean, what do you, that, it was just like, whoa. So I got dressed quickly. I went to the ramp. We had morning prayer from eight to nine with the students. And I, I literally was walking in the door for the morning prayer. And I walked in and Pam and her husband were standing there and a couple of other friends of mine. And I mean, when I opened the door, I said, guys, the weirdest thing just happened to me. But I'm telling you, this was real. So I told them what I just told you. So I carry that my spirit, my husband and I both, we're just pondering that. Rick, what do you, th- my husband's name is Rick. What do you think that means? What I've told you to do, do it now. Well, about a couple of days later, I get this text on my phone from a man. Y'all, I never, hardly ever hear from this man. He's a Southern Baptist pastor in Birmingham, Alabama, filled with the Holy Ghost. But whenever Pastor Richard messages me through the years past, maybe once a year, once a couple of years. Whenever he has sent me words, they've always been those kind of words. They come to pass and they get my attention. So anyway, I've not heard from him in a while. A couple of days after that encounter, ding, phone goes off, look at it and see his name, Pastor Richard at the top. And I thought, ooh. So I tap it and up pulls this word. He's always a man, no small talk, straight to the point. So Miss Karen, Pastor Karen, praying for you this morning, heard this word from the Lord to give you. What I've told you to do, do it now. Time is of the essence. Now, I don't believe that that word was just for Karen. I believe that word is for the ramp. I believe that word is for Fresh Start Church. I believe it's for those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, both corporately and individually. What God has told you to do, do it now. Time is of the essence. We are living in critical times. Everybody knows that. The world systems are falling into chaos. And the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And this is our time to shine like beacon lights in the darkness. As Isaiah called it, gross darkness. We are not called to live afraid and in a bunker house somewhere hiding. Come on, it's not what he has called us to do. No. He has called us according. It's amazing to me. Here we are in this crazy world that we're living in, the church placed right in the middle of this hour. He knew exactly what he was doing when he let you be born into this generation. Because according to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the 18th verse, it says this, and God has given us the task. Come on, right now, during this season of the world, this harvest season, say it's harvest time. So why? What are we doing right now as we're waiting for the eastern sky to split? We're going to harvest every soul like Jude said. We're going to live snatching them out of the fire. That's how we're going to live. The only reason we're still here on this planet is to worship him and snatch another one out of the fire. 2 Corinthians 5, 18, it says this, and God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. Who to give the task to? We are God's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. That's what you're doing in these prayer. Before this pre-service prayer was starting. That's what you're doing. You're not just praying out of your little voice. 
God is making his appeal through you. It's the spirit of God calling out in you. You are the one he's getting through on the earth to bring heaven to earth. You are the one. In the middle of this warfare here, he's put us. I told you last time I was here because I remember saying it. Out of Ephesians 10th chapter, 6th chapter, 10th verse, 6th chapter, 10th verse. We're not fighting flesh and blood. It's good to know because it can get confusing. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places. And it's so funny to me because, you know, God's ways and his battle strategies are just, they've always been fascinating. That's Jehoshaphat, Gideon, David. He's funny, not only his strategies, but also the people he chooses. I thought about that this morning when I was looking across this, this room. Every age, and I loved that. You had some old ladies up here like me. Come on. We're just doing, giving the best we can. It got much rhythm, but we're going for it, you know? I love it. I see some of the kids up here. I know the kids have my heart. I just love it because even in the American, even in our armed forces in America, we do still have those special forces. There's Delta and what, Navy SEALs, those, those um, nameless and faceless and highly trained men with, we'll just call a special skill set that can destroy an enemy before he knows what hits him. But you know what? According to 1 Corinthians, God's got his own special forces. Yeah. It's the unlikely. It's the weak ones. It's the ones the world calls foolish and weak. Has God chosen so that no flesh can glory in his presence? It's people that have to live utterly dependent upon God or I ain't got nothing. And to the natural eye, I get people look in here and they think we're a bunch of fools. Usually the way God works. People look in here and think, well, there just ain't nothing to be worried about. Look at those old women up there dancing around. There's nothing to be scared about about them. (laughs) To the natural eye, you may not look like anything to be too concerned about. But to hell. Fresh Start Church, you are terrorists to the kingdom of darkness. Fresh Start Church, you are the devil's worst nightmare. Come on, your wanted poster is hanging in the halls of hell right now. Why do you think? Why do you think? You as Fresh Start Church have been battling some of the things that you've been battling. I'm talking about just, let's just go individually to you. Some of you that are sitting in this room, and the Lord told me this this morning to talk to you. Some of you that have been battling a sickness that you just have no answers for. That just doesn't seem to want to go away. Pray and don't understand it. Some of you that are battling with some family stuff and issues. Some of you that have been battling with just this, this, with these weird voices in your mind of just feeling like you're just worthless. Like it's, I'm talking about you individually. I'm talking about the you nobody else sees but God. Cause he told me that you were dealing with this. Some of you just feeling like I don't even matter. I don't matter to my family. I don't matter really even to the church. The liar will tell you that. I'd just be better for me just to go into heaven. Some of you have been battling with strange offenses, not even like you. Like, how am I dealing with this stupid thoughts? How am I getting offended? Why? Why am I noticing all this stuff? Some of you have been battling with some family hurt that has just paralyzed you, leaving you, what the Lord said to me this morning, emotionally drained, exhausted, and depleted. Why? Why? Why you? According to Daniel, 7th chapter, the 21st verse, that in the last days, the enemy will work, and his tactic will be to just wear out the saints. 
Don't be surprised by this. He's trying to wear you down. Why would the enemy do this to you individually? And why would the enemy try to do this to this church corporately? Look at my blue eyes and let me tell you why. Because you matter that much. You matter that much. That's how valuable you are to the kingdom of God. How needed your prayers are to this hour. How important you are, Fresh Start Church, to the advancement of the kingdom of God. You don't even realize what an impact these pre-service prayers are making. You don't even know what's happening when your intercessory team is in Tucson and Birmingham and Washington, D.C. and Friday Night Prayer for America. Why have you been in this battle? Because you matter. Matter.